All right. Hi, everyone. And I'm excited uh, to present uh, Hot Stuff 2, which is a, uh, a talk about uh, observing that uh, it is possible to solve BFT consensus uh, with optimality, uh, responsiveness, and in two phases. So this is joint work uh, with uh, uh, Kartik. And here, um, this is a very simple observation. I'll start with the, the key takeaways before I get into the technical details. Um, the simple observation that we make here is that BFT consensus leader replacement regime, the crux of the difficulty, shouldn't be this complex. And I'm using the word complex intentionally as a pun, both in the English sense and in the mathematical sense. So it shouldn't be complex in the mathematical sense, meaning it can be linear and avoid the crux of the uh, communication complexity in uh, BFT consensus protocols. And it also shouldn't be complex in the English sense, uh, meaning it should be developer friendly. It should be something that we have confidence when we implement it, that it is simple enough and uh, can maintain and uh, um, uh, be correct. And there are three um, ways in which this observation manifests itself. The first one is this creates a 33% improvement, third improvement in the latency of a golden standard uh, in the construction of uh, BFT protocols, which is hot stuff. And instead of three phases or three blocks that are needed in hot stuff for commit finality, uh, two phases uh, are enough. The second is that in all BFT consensus protocols that are view-based, the view change um, doesn't need the leader to justify the next proposal, uh, which is both uh, complex from a com communication point of view and um, uh, from a logical point of view, the logic is complex. None of this is actually needed. And in a long line of protocols, starting with PBFT, uh, this type of view change regime was used and wasn't really needed. You can just get rid of it. And even more so, there's a line of protocols that tried to optimize the complexity of this uh, leader justification. And none of this is actually needed. And the third manifestation of this uh, uh, observation is that in protocols that added um, a maximal uh, delay, waiting for the maximal uh, network uh, delay uh, in order to manage a simpler um, view change regime, um, notably in Tendermint and some follow-on uh, protocols, you actually don't need uh, to incur this extra delay. You can be responsive in all scenarios except when the immediately uh, previous uh, leader has failed. So these are the three high level takeaways uh, that if you're an expert, uh, probably very meaningful to you. And if not, then in the next uh, 10 minutes, uh, I will explain them. But I also wanna follow uh, Alberto's lead yesterday and uh, send you away with the key two um, things to remember about this stock, even if you don't remember anything else. The first one is leader replacement in BF BFT consensus doesn't need to be complex. And the second one is that, uh, in the most optimal solutions that achieve uh, desirable properties, two phases uh, suffice. All right, so now let me go back to the beginning. And the problem we are solving, the BFT consensus uh, uh, problem, uh, has been explored for literally four decades uh, by uh, a lot, a lot of works and a lot of experts in the field. And through these four decades, there's been an ongoing quest for scalable, and high performance solutions. And what that means in theoretical terms is that these solutions will have optimistically the minimal most uh, number of messages that you can imagine. So at the very least, in order to form consensus, you need to pay order n messages, order n communication, because everybody needs to learn uh, the decision. Uh, and in the worst case, it would pay a quadratic and squared uh, communication complexity, which is known to be optimal. And likewise, in terms of latency, the uh, optimistic case should move as fast as the network allows. 
unless there are failures. And in case there are failures, then it would pay um, uh, a network latency uh, that a, a network, uh, a bound on the network latency, which is known, and usually in the literature we denote it by big delta, it would pay delta for each actual failure that the protocol encounters. And in addition to these theoretical complexity measures, um, we also want protocols in the blockchain uh, world that um, balance the load across nodes. So we don't want a single node that becomes stable to just continually propose all the blocks and take all the load, uh, both because of fairness and uh, um, uh, worry about censorship, uh, but also because our experience is that when you employ such a uh, node, then that node eventually becomes overloaded and becomes a bottleneck. And so express this uh, uh, property uh, as a desire that over the course of execution, over a sequence of end decisions, each node will suffer at most linear communication uh, and not one of them suffer quadratic. And in addition to all these theoretical measures, as I said, we're also looking for simple solutions. We don't want, we don't want overly complex solutions because our confidence in the implementation of such solutions uh, uh, is questionable. And so I will explain uh, our observation in Hot Stuff 2 uh, on how to achieve all of these desirable uh, properties um, with, uh, without uh, you know, the complexity of view change. And the solution will revolve around a recipe which has been for, with us for two decades and uh, has a two-phase core protocol. And it looks like this. So the first thing is uh, we want to have a leader uh, drive a proposal uh, so that we know that when we have a correct leader, we can get this uh, proposal uh, uh, to commit uh, very efficiently. So if the leader is correct, there's no problem. The leader just sends a proposal to everybody and uh, uh, we have a decision. But of course, the leader might be faulty and it might send different proposals to different uh, nodes and uh, it might not send a proposal to some nodes. So in order to uh, uh, make sure that we uh, have agreement, the first thing the leader uh, would need to do is uh, get a certificate uh, from a quorum of the validators that it sent the same proposal. And so this is a uh, uh, building block um, in all of these uh, protocols, uh, which we can refer to as secure broadcast, in which the leader sends a proposal, the proposal gets certified by quorum, and this guarantees that the leader could get at most one certificate for you know, a unique proposal. And then it can use this certificate to uh, drive a decision. The original protocols like PBFT had a quadratic um, protocol for getting this secure product uh, uh, broadcast. Uh, but later it was shown uh, first by uh, 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 Writer and Cashin and uh, then by others that uh, using advanced uh, crypto, uh, cryptography and uh, threshold uh, 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 signature uh, schemes, the leader uh, can drive this proposal with linear uh, communication. But still we don't have a solution because now the leader can fail in the middle of sending this uh, certified unique proposal. It can send it to some validators and not to others intentionally or just by a benign uh, fail. So we still don't have a uh, consensus. And this is, this is where we get to uh, uh, this uh, two-phase uh, solution recipe. So the idea is that after getting a unique proposal in the first phase, the second phase will drive uh, something which we call, uh, refer to as lock and commit or sometimes it's uh, referred to as commit adopt. And the idea is very simple. Before a, certi a certified uh, proposal can be committed, a quorum of the validators have to become locked on it. And so now, if there is a commitment, then a quorum already hold a lock and will protect and guard that commitment. And conversely, if a quorum doesn't have a lock and we might miss it, then a commit is not possible. So again, this is, this is kind of the, the standard recipe for many, many variants and uh, optimized uh, uh, versions. And the crux of the difficulty is that there could be a failure in 
any one of these phases, in any one of these steps. So um, the leader could fail to obtain a certified uh, uh, acknowledgement from the validators to a unit proposal. It could fail to send the committed uh, proposal after having locked, or it could fail while uh, obtaining a, uh, an approval of the locks. So there are three uh, different scenarios uh, for this to fail. But actually, we really only care and worry about the uh, middle one. Because if the leader didn't uh, even succeed in getting a proposal uh, uh, certified, then um, nothing could get committed and there's no problem. And if the leader fails uh, 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 sending the, the committed value, then there are enough uh, validators that are locked on it. But the real difficulty is what happens if there's a failure in the middle of getting a quorum locked and some of them may have locks and others may not. And then when we come to the system and try to recover what was the decision, we don't really know what happened. And so this is where PBFT uh, introduced a solution based on a leader proof. So what will happen if there's a failure in this middle stage is that uh, the system will eventually give up on the leader and will go through a view change and a new leader will collect uh, reports from a quorum of the validators to find out whether they hold a lock or not. And in this scenario, some of them may be lying, you know, up to a third could be lying, and some of them may really don't not have a lock. And the leader could take all of these reports and decide whether uh, a commit could have happened or not and use that as the next proposal. But in order to convince everybody uh, to see the same thing that the leader uh, sees uh, in PBFT and all of the line of protocols after it, uh, the leader sent uh, a proof of uh, all of these reports. And that results in uh, complexity. It's complex uh, both in the communication and in logic. And this has really been the crux of the difficulty in uh, BFT protocols for uh, about two decades. What we observe in Hot Stuff 2 is that um, this is really not needed because the leader of the next view uh, after uh, uh, taking over from the previous one knows exactly in which situation it is. There are really two cases. The responsive case is that the next leader actually obtains a report with a quorum certificate from the immediately preceding view. In this case, it knows that it has. Um, uh, uh, a possible commit value and it uses it. If it didn't get a certificate uh, of the leader proposal from the immediate uh, preceding view, then it knows that um, uh, it couldn't have committed, but it doesn't need to convince uh, anybody yet. Uh, it needs to wait and see if anybody might have locked. And because in this case, the previous leader has failed, um, the view change already incurred a, an order of uh, you know, this big delta delay. Usually we wait at least four delta before expiring in view. And so it can wait one extra delta and make sure that it waits for enough reports. And then it knows that it has the highest potential lock in the system. And the key thing is that internally, the leader can distinguish between these two cases. And so this is the same thing in pictures, uh, either Scenario one, either the leader obtains the higher certificate or it waits delta. And this is it. Um, in order to look at the full protocol, uh, I need to tell you how to pipeline the protocol if you want to be super efficient, and also how to solve the view synchronization problem uh, also with linear communication, but I won't have time to do that today. You can look at the paper. I just want to briefly say that uh, uh, to comment on how we got here, um so obviously i'm talking about hot stuff too because there was hot stuff and what hot stuff did was observe uh that the complexity of this view change uh could be solved with an extra uh, step instead of two phases three phases so going through a history of uh four decades very quickly uh this is uh, what hot stuff uh introduced it introduced a protocol that had linearity had worked worst case quadratic communication and responsiveness. And it did that by introducing an extra phase, which now uh, hot stuff to uh, removes. 
So this is almost it. I want to finish with uh, a bit of a philosophical uh, note. Um, so hot stuff already uh, broke some uh, myths uh, that were around, whoops, that were around for uh, two decades where um, uh, um, the complex view change regime uh, was repeatedly used by protocols. Hot stuff too now observes that even that uh, in hindsight uh, was more than we needed. Um, and there are many other cases where protocols that uh, received a lot of attention, a lot of experts looked at, suddenly we see something that we didn't see before. We just heard, we just heard Crisola talk about Babka, which shows that uh, a high throughput DAG based uh, BFT protocols doesn't need to suffer a high latency. In fact, you can achieve both high throughput and high latency on DAG based protocols. And in my past works, uh, I've been fortunate enough uh, uh, to participate in other cases where um, uh, in some works we uh, introduced uh, certain uh, myths uh, that were uh, assumed uh, correct or believed by the community for decades, uh, we were able uh, to, to, to suddenly uh, uh, break them. Uh, one of them was vertical Paxos, CoreFoodDB, and flexible Paxos. You can always obviously look at all of these uh, by Googling them. So I want to leave off with uh, the question, OK, so what else uh, have we missed and what other uh, grounds can we break? Not by complex protocols, but just by simple observations. And with this, I want to thank you.